In this video, we discuss problem 7.1.18 from Essentials of Statistics, sixth edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says a genetic experiment with peas resulted in one sample of offspring that consisted of 443 green peas and 155 yellow peas. Part A asks us to construct a 90% confidence interval to estimate the percentage of yellow peas. And then in part B, it's asked, or we're asked um, the following. It says that it was expected that 25% of the offspring would be yellow. Given that the percentage of the offspring of yellow peas is not 25%, do the results contradict expectations? So then in part A, it says construct that 95 or that 90% confidence interval and express the percentages in decimal form. So we want them as proportions rather than percentages and we're asked to round to three decimal places as needed. To show you how to do this, I'm going to share my paper with you. Okay, so the first thing that we should do anytime we are constructing a confidence interval is decide whether all of the requirements are met to even construct a confidence interval. So the first requirement is that the sample is a simple random sample. So I can say that, yes, this is random. These, this data is random. And then the second requirement is that the conditions for the binomial distribution are satisfied. So there's a fixed number of trials and the trials are independent. There are two categories of outcomes and the probabilities remain constant for each trial. So here we're asked to express or construct a confidence interval to estimate the percentage of yellow peas. So we do have two categories. The peas are either yellow or they're not yellow. Um, so that's accurate. There's a fixed number of trials. So there's a fixed amount of peas we have here. We have 443 green peas and 155 yellow peas. So the sample size, it's the number of the total number of peas, is that 443 plus 155. So 598. So we have 598 trials. The trials are independent. The outcome of one trial, whether or not you get a green pea or a yellow pea, is not at all affected by the other trials. And the Yes, the probabilities remain constant for each trial. So the probability of getting a green pea um, as opposed to a yellow pea or the probability of success in one trial, the probability of getting yellow pea in one trial is constant from trial to trial. So the conditions for the binomial distribution are met. It seems to be a simple random sample and there are at least five successes and at least five failures. Well, 155 yellow peas is 155 successes. Uh, 443 green peas can be considered 443 um, failures. Um, so that means that a normal distribution is a suitable approximation to the binormal or binomial distribution um, here. So given that all of that is satisfied, if we want this um, confidence interval estimate of that proportion of peas, This value here is just going to be p hat minus the error, and this value is p hat plus the error. Now, this is always going to be an interval of values. This is how I tend to think about it. There's p hat in the middle, then you add the error, and then you subtract the error from that. Um, so all we need to do in order to fill these in here is compute p hat, compute the error, and then compute the sum and that difference. So p hat is the number of successes out of the total number of trials that we have. Well, we had 155 yellow peas, and we're going to consider that a success. And I'm just writing this down for myself. X is the number of successful trials. And we're calling success, getting a yellow P. 
And we want success to be a yellow P because we're asked to construct a confidence interval to estimate the per percentage of yellow Ps. That's why we're using that for success. And the sample size is that 443 plus 155. So we get 155 over 598. So that's approximately 0 0.25919. I'm gonna round out to the fifth decimal place um, because we're going to add and subtract the error. I'll round at the very end to three decimal places for both of these guys. Now for the error, we need Z sub alpha over two and then we'll multiply by um, the square root of p hat times q hat over n. This is the estimated um, standard deviation of the sample proportions. Now, if p hat is equal to this, q hat is equal to one minus that. So we're just going to fill that in. So a p hat I think I want to use that exact fraction, 155 over 598. Q hat is the number of failures, so that's going to be 443 over 598. And we'll multiply, or excuse me, divide those by 598. So that's giving us that standard deviation of the sample proportions. And then we want Z sub alpha over 2. And we were told to construct a 90% confidence interval. So if I've got a normal distribution like this, standard normal distribution, and I want a 90% confidence interval. It means I want the 90% of values in the middle here. That means I want 10% in the tails. But that's going to be split. I'll have 5% on the left and 5% on the right. Z sub alpha over 2 in this case is Z sub uh, 0.05. It separates this top 5% from that bottom 95%. Since this area to the left is 95%, or in decimal form, 0 0.95, I can find Z sub 0 0.05 um, using my um, table of z-scores. Now that's going to be a positive z-value, so I'll go to the positive z-scores, and I want 95% to be my area to the left, or 0 0.9500 in the table. And I'm looking for this in the body of the table because I'm looking for the corresponding z-score. And actually, it's right there. You see that asterisk? This is this z score is directly in between 0 0.9495 and 0 0.9505. And that's 1.64 over here and 1.65 over here. If you follow that asterisk to the subscript here, it says the area to the left corresponds to a z score of z equals 1.645, which is what we would expect because that's 1.64 and that's 1.65, and this is saying it's in between. So um, Z sub 0 0.05 is 1.645. Make sure I wrote that down correctly. Yep. And so that's what I substitute in here. And then I'm multiplying by this P hat times Q hat, all divided by the sample size, and then you take the square root of that to get the error. Well, take the square root of that and multiply by the um, critical Z value to get the error. So we're gonna have 155 divided by 598 times 443 divided by 598, divided by 598, Want square root of the answer. And then I take that and I multiply by the 1.645.
And so I get an error of approximately 0 0.02948. If I round out to five decimal places. So this upper bound and lower bound for my confidence interval can be found by just taking the p hat and the error and then adding them and taking the p hat and the error, error and subtracting them. So p hat plus the error is 0 0.25919 plus 0 0.02948 And I get 0 0.28867, but we want to round to three decimal places here. So I will round that to 0 point, well, and all of these are rounded really, um, but I will round this number to 0 0.289. That's p hat, which is in the middle, plus the error. And if I want the lower bound, I need p hat minus the error now. And we get 0 0.22971. And if I'm rounding to three decimal places, that seven would turn that nine into a zero, and that would make that approximately a 0 0.230. All right, let's go back to my lab statistics and see if it likes this answer. Oops. Yes, 0 0.230 is there, and then the upper bound was 0 0.289. All right, great. Now, the second part of the question says, oops. The second part of the question says, given that the percentage of offspring yellow peas is not 25%, and that was our expectation that the percentage of yellow peas would be 25%. Do the results contradict expectations? Well, if we're trying to de decide whether or not those expectations are contradicted, we have to see, is this 0.25, the corresponding proportion to that 25% between this lower bound and this upper bound? And 0.25 is between the 0 0.23 and 0 0.289. Um, so, um, no, it does not contradict expectations because the interval includes the 0 0.25. So the true percentage could easily be equal 0 0.25 or 